feel free to use demos, POVs for making your video content on the YouTube. That's from Star Ladder, okay? So I have direct communication giving me permission to use the GoTV demos to make the videos on the YouTube. So everybody just calm down, all right? No DMCAs. Stop being a dick, Star Ladder. Greetings, hi, the War Al greets you. Congratulations to Astralis for reviving their top form play for at least a weekend and winning the major championship. I put forth that their match against Team Liquid in the quarterfinals is a masterclass of competitive gamesmanship and the greatest counterplay in the history of Counter-Strike. In a major that was plagued with the lowest viewership numbers since 2014, the most anticlimactic grand final of all time, and awful, awful observing, there were some cool games. The most interesting of these happened during the grand final between Astralis and Liquid, which somehow was played during the quarterfinals of the tournament. Not sure if there was a, a schedule mix up there or something like that. This was the match that everybody was looking forward to. The pick'em predictions were 51 to 49%. Uh, we were kind of robbed of this meetup by Ence's miracle tournament run last major. Whoever was to win this matchup would most likely be the major champions. Going into the Berlin major, Team Liquid was the team to beat. They were the number one highest rated team, had a historic 26 match winning streak in best of threes and a 100% win rate on Vertigo, the newest map added to professional Counter-Strike. Astralis had since fallen out of form. They had gone from downright scare back-to-back -back major champions to sharing the shadows with upcoming Ensign Vitality, while Team Liquid reveled in the spotlight. It was clear going into the major that Astralis had one objective to knock Liquid off their high horse. Assuming they'd be facing them at some point, I believe they worked very hard to devise a plan to kill the king. Nobody saw it coming, not professional analysts, not even Team Liquid, certainly not me. Map vetoes can give a team a massive advantage if they play it right. It started off with Mirage being banned by Astralis and then Train being banned by Liquid, not a big surprise, but then Astralis' plan started to take form when they picked Vertigo. Vertigo, a map that Team Liquid was undefeated on, a map that had just seen a big update from Valve. I think this pick immediately tilted Team Liquid. What were they planning? Had Liquid properly prepared on this map against Astralis in particular? It was all just a big question mark going into it. This video is about Vertigo, the 200 IQ map veto pick that Astralis seemingly specifically prepared against Team Liquid. Vertigo recently saw an important patch that reworked many areas of the map. The timings for the terrorists were delayed, just enough for Astralis to change how the map was played on the CT side. But first, they saw themselves on the terrorist side, charged with taking bomb sites off of the best team in the world. It started off with Liquid taking a commanding lead on the first three rounds, putting Astralis into a save. It was only thanks to a great individual play by device that they were able to steal their first point. Once we got into the gun rounds, a pattern developed with Astralis' T-side setup. They left absolutely no holes in their defense. If their player mid got smoked off and couldn't watch the ladder room, a player would immediately rotate and be in position to watch ladder. If they had an AWP, they set up device in a defensive AWP boost at bottom A. They'd sometimes send two players to B stairs and set up a crossfire, but just for the first few moments of the round, there was no way for a CT to be able to get a good forward position to pick players off early on. Despite this, Liquid was still able to play a good CT side. In this round, notice how Astralis is well aware of a liege pushing in and reacts perfectly to it. It was only thanks to a liege's world-class play that he was able to take the 2K. It almost seemed like Astralis were paranoid of some CT aggression by Liquid, but that aggression never came. Liquid calmly played the bomb sites, rotated between, and launched some successful retakes. If you rotate on Vertigo, you have to walk the entire way because your footsteps will be heard. Because of this, when Astralis rotated to do a bombsite take, they committed to that bombsite take, and through brilliant use of utility and positioning, were able to pull off some outstanding wins.
While the half ended with an even scoreline of 8-7 in favor of Astralis, it did become clear that Astralis had been strongly practicing this map, doing what was quite possibly the most daring trick in the history of Counter-Strike. Meanwhile, on Team Liquid... When Astralis got to the CT side, everything changed. Round 17. Fast CT aggression on A ramp. Glaive gets into position before the terrorists have a chance to figure out what is going on. The new T spawn timings added by Valve allow for this to happen. Liquid cleans it up. They are the best team in the world after all, but they then decide to rotate to B in a 3 versus 2 instead of continuing on to A. Hmm. Dupree has taken the opportunity to get into a sneaky spot. If Liquid had played like Astralis did and just continued on into the bomb site, Astralis would have saved and Liquid would be victorious. Round 18. Two players put aggression on elevator and Dupree pushes into B stairs. Once Dupree is figured out, he hides, and the two elevator players quickly rotate to clean it up. We didn't see anything like this from Liquid. Round 19. Naf, who watches mid, shoots out the skylights to throw some clever flashes and assist his team. Magisk, who hears the skylights being shot out, simply runs by to ladder room. This, this right here, tells me that Astralis' play was specifically prepared counter strats. Just running by here dry is such a bad idea since a player is normally watching it, but the tell of the skylight glass breaking told Magisk that he had a few seconds to sneak by and oh boy. Did it work out? Round 20. Liquid puts some early aggression on B, but Astralis hears it and doesn't peek. Now playing a little bit more passively since there's a bunch of players sitting right outside. But with nobody watching A, Device sneaks his way down, effectively shutting off this side of the map and allowing Astralis to hold four on B. Again, if Liquid played like Astralis did on the T side, this couldn't have happened. Round 21. Nobody watches bottom B. Too late, Dupree gets onto stairs. Oh, Liquid, you're catching on. Magus gets the trade and Liquid sets up for an A take, but oh no, Magus now pushes through B, about to flank, and a leech watches the hard flank. This was a great round for Liquid. They finally caught on what the heck was going on and they played it right. It was the only T side round that they would win. Round 22, same aggression ramp as round 17. All players are in position to trade, perfect coordination. Device, who's falling back, then hides at concrete with an AWP. What a play, what a calculation, what a risk. A single Molotov, have it in their inventory. It's a common Molotov, but they don't even check it. Did Astralis know that Liquid doesn't check concrete late into the round? Did Device calculate that they wouldn't assume an AWPer would go play concrete? Or did Device just get very lucky? I contend that there's just too many instances of this kind of play working here for it to just be luck. Fast aggressive CT side positioning, keeping track of enemy movements through sound to push behind enemy lines and prevent any T side rotates. The most interesting thing to me about this CT side play from Astralis is that if they had played it against Astralis's T side, it wouldn't have worked. Astralis's CT side perfectly played against Liquid's T side, which makes their map pick of Vertigo and their specific preparation the greatest counterplay in the history of Counter-Strike. A Counter-Strat like this is only gonna work once. Can Astralis maintain form for their next meeting and defeat Liquid in a straight up match? This is not the end of the Age of Liquid. 
This is not a revival of the Age of Astralis, but this could be the beginning of one of the most interesting rivalries in the history of the game. If Astralis attends events. Thank you both very much for watching. I am the War Owl, and I still have no closer. For once, can I make one of these videos where Liquid actually wins? Oh, by the way, Stewie2K was on Cloud9. This counts as Cloud9 Part 2. We're done.